to you. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good. You looking good out here coming to church during the pandemic. Yes. Amen. To God be the glory. Let me put this up. Can I get some? Can I get some fire? Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Turn me down. Turn me down just a little bit. I got it on mute. Sorry. All right, go ahead. Father God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your love, Lord Jesus. Have your way. 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 Thank you, Lord. All right. Y'all looking good. Praise the Lord. It's power about to slap it all y'all, man. I'm believing the Lord today. Man, you come out during the pandemic, man. We don't want religion, you know what I'm saying? We want some power. We want some glory. We want Holy Ghost, man. Something I'm going to lead different, man. You know what I'm saying? I got to have the real, true Jesus. Full of power. Amen. I got to lead different. I'm tired of religion. We've been going to church our whole life. We need God. We need the Lord Jesus Christ. What's been provided for us. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Worship was so sweet. Let me just go on here and pray. I'm going to be led by the Spirit today. Let the Lord Jesus do what he do. Father God, we give you all the honor and the glory, Lord. <laughs> Lord God, I thank you for leading me on what to teach, Lord God. These are your people. You really want to teach your people, Lord God. You want to lead them. You want to guide them, Lord. I yield to you, Lord God, right now. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my walk, my talk, Lord God. In Jesus' name. I yield to you as my master, Lord. Blood of Jesus be against you, Satan. I come against every form of distraction right now in the name of Jesus. Every form of hindrance. Now in Jesus' name, I bind you, Satan. I command you to go now in the name of Jesus. You will take your hands off God's people today. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we give you all the honor and all the glory, Lord. Lord God, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. 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 All right. Oh, um, what is going on, Lord? Here we go. We've been in a series called Follow Me. Um, and today's, um, thank you, Mario. Today's scripture we're going to be using within our series is Matthew chapter 4, verse 19. And he said to them, come after me as disciples, letting me be your guide. Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. The Lord Jesus is after, he want to make you. He's after you. The principle here speaks of the person you follow, you give right to make you. The person you follow, you give right to make you. Amen? Amen. And Jesus is looking for disciples. He's not looking for churchgoers. He's not looking for believers. To be frank with you, Jesus wants, he wants people to be yielded to him. All right. He wants their will to be yielded to him. He wants their mind and their emotions to be yielded to him. Amen. The Lord wants to control you. He wants to rule you. He wants to dominate you. Not by force, not by might, but by his spirit. He wants to lead you and guide you. He wants to help you overcome every problem, every circumstance. Jesus wants to be Lord over your life. But this is something that he can't make you do. He can't coerce you into. You must yield yourself to him. Amen? Amen. Um, the reason I made Jesus, one of the reasons I made Jesus Lord is because I was tired of busting my head. Amen. I was tired of struggling. Amen. I was tired of failure. 
I was tired of this life and me being a Christian and God having all power and I don't look like it. My emotions are up and down, crossing around. There are all my choices and cycles going on in my life. Circumstances keep cycling right back around again and again. It looks like I'm walking two steps forward, taking five steps back. And Jesus want to break the cycle today. He want to break the momentum of the enemy and the forces of darkness that's been going on in your choices and your life. Amen. Amen. I got tired of struggling. With the same stuff everybody else struggling with. Amen. Amen. Jesus want to change it to the point where you stand out. You look different. Amen. You're not struggling with the things that people are struggling with. Why? Because he's Lord. Amen. Amen. Now you used to. Amen. You used to butt your head, but there has to be a track record now where Jesus is leading you away from the same old test and the same old trial. That keep coming yes. year by year, yes. season by season. Yes. Yes. He want to break this cycle. Amen. Can I get amen? amen. Hallelujah. By all to this, you can tell me go to last year. Hey, breaking it. <laughs> amen. 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 Last week, Pastor Nate preached a powerful message on uh, the power of acceptance. Amen. It was a powerful message. If you missed it, please go check it out. The week before that, I preached a message on restoring the outcast, a message on rejection. Uh, please go to our website or our Restoration YouTube page and check out those messages. Amen. And I am somewhat going to build off the idea or the premise of rejection. Jesus, uh, rejection is a real issue that many people struggle with. Um, and Jesus want to help us to overcome rejection. Rejection have a way of producing a need in you or a cavity in you or a discontentment in you that the enemy takes advantage of and produce counterfeits. Say counterfeits. counterfeits. Today's message is entitled Untwist Me. Untwist Me. What's wrong with them girls over there? <laughs> See, the prophets need to sit separated. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they need to go over here. They need to sit separated. Amen? Amen. Yes, Jesus. Praise God. You know how you get two bad kids and you know, they, can, they ain't going to do right? You can't put friends together. You can't pray, you can put brothers and sisters in the same classroom. You need to separate them. <laughs> Rejection is a real issue. Amen? And God wants to make us whole. He wants to help us to overcome the effects of rejection because none of us can escape it. All of us have been through rejection sometime or another. Amen. Rejection, uh, reject, the enemy wants rejection to be one of your first negative experiences in life. Amen. Rejection is the gateway spirit. All right, let me say this again. They said marijuana was the gateway drug. Rejection is the gateway spirit. Amen. Jesus wants to uh, heal us of rejection and begin to rebuild our life on his love, on, his, on who he is. Acceptance, love, wholeness, contentment. God wants to build his, your life on who he is. In order to do that, he has to knock out what your life was previously built on. And many of us suffer from the spirit, the mentality, the emotional uh, trauma of rejection. Amen, amen. If you want more rejection, go to the YouTube page. Today's message is entitled Untwist Me. This message, I want to be clear, this message is on lust. Oh, let me say it again. Lust and perversion. Lust and perversion. To pervert something means to alter something from its original course, its meaning, to distort, to corrupt from its first intended purpose. Say that again. To pervert means to alter something 
from its original course, meaning to distort, to corrupt from its first intended purpose. Another word for pervert is to twist, to bend, to distort. Lust and perversion is the spirits that twist, that come in and twist up everything that's not like God within you. Rejection leaves you so vulnerable to control. Rejection leaves a cavity or an empty place within you that the enemy comes and tries to produce a counterfeit. Witchcraft and Jezebel, you know I gotta talk about Jezebel and witchcraft. Because it's so powerful. Lust is a power that the enemy uses to control you. And many people use lust and perversion to manipulate, to control. You know Jezebel, she loved to, is she after control? It's not just a she, but it's a spirit, amen? And she's responsible for all sexual immorality. When we deal with, when we deal with Jezebel, we deal with sexual immorality because it's a form of manipulation, it's a form of control, it's a form of witchcraft, amen? Witchcraft, all witchcraft is, is control. Amen. By uh, altering, by coming another way other than you just choosing. It has to, you have to manipulate, you have to threaten, you have to coerce, you have to blackmail. All that is Jezebel. You have to lie, you have to trick, you have to deceive. All that is witchcraft. Amen. And one way the enemy uses witchcraft to enter into our life is through lust and perversion. And, but the foundation in which he builds on is rejection because rejection has you feeling vulnerable. Don't nobody love me. Don't nobody care. All my life is ruined. I just feel like uh, you feel like uh, not living. You feel like if you died, then no one would care. These are the emotions. These are the effects. These are the feelings of being rejected. Whether your mama rejected you, your daddy rejected you, your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, it don't matter. Supervisor, work, it don't matter. Rejection has a way of producing a cavity within you where you are begin to need, you will look to need something outside God's will. Amen. And this is the enemy. The realm of desire. This is so good, boy. Is where lust is born. Galatians 5.16 says, But I say, walk and live habitually. It's the Amplified Classic. In the spirit. Responsive to and controlled and guided by the spirit then you will certainly not gratify the cravings, say cravings, Amen. and the desires of the flesh or of the human nature without God. A deeper understanding um, of lust is an inward craving. Amen. It's not necessarily, you can have a lust for good things and a lust for bad things, but many times the enemy comes in before you can even make, have, have enough sense to make a good choice to want God and lust God and lust after good things. He presents to you a counterfeit. Lust is the devil's form of love. The way the devil spells love is L-U-S-T. Your desires is what you want. And you can either want good things or you can want bad things. You can want godly things or you can want evil things. Your desire, in, in your, your, the, the, the place of desire is very tricky because it seems right to you. It's very tricky because it feels so good and right to you. And if we don't let Jesus begin to disciple our desire, say desire. desire. 
James 1, 13 through 15, Amplified says, Let no one say when I am tempted, I am tempted from God, for God is incapable of being tempted by what is evil, and he himself tempts no one. But every person is tempted when he or she is drawn away, enticed, baited by his own evil desires, lust, and passions. Then the evil desires, when it's conceived, give birth to sin, and sin, when it's fully mature, brings forth death. Amen? Amen. So our desires need to be discipled, even in what seems to be good. And before I hit go into sexual lust and go into the sexual end of lust, I must hit on the things that, that's not as noticeable as lust. And that is uh, ambition. Ungodly ambition. Wanting to be great. Wanting to be something. Wanting to be um, wanting to have status, wanting to be rich, wanting to be married, wanting to have a position in the church. Many people have ambitions that God didn't birth in them. The reason people have different ambitions than what God has put in them is because rejection has a way of making a person overcompensate and to exalt themselves and move into a position of pride and to say, I can preach and I can lead and I can, I'm a leader. Wow. You know, leaders don't even have to say that. That's right. Preachers ain't even got to say, I'm a preacher. Right. You're going to find them preaching somewhere. They're going to be preaching and teaching even if they don't enter no pulpit. Or any pulpit. <laughs> <laughs> you have people have ambition to do things and to be great and become all this and want people to think that they're special, not knowing that they're already special in Jesus. Amen. That you don't even have to try. You ain't got to exalt yourself to be nothing. Why? Because Jesus Loves this, I know. He loves you. Yeah. Why you got to exalt yourself? Because you don't believe that. Yeah. When you believe that Jesus made you rich, you ain't got to run out the money. Yeah. Amen. You don't have to run out the things. You don't got to run out of career, after a career. You ain't got to run out the nobody. Nobody can be able to satisfy you like Jesus anyway. Yeah. And so you have ambitions, and these ambitions that I got the, I got the, I got the. What did Jesus birth that in you? Did that come from the master? Or is it coming from, stemming from rejection? Is it a cavity left by rejection that Jesus ain't filled? Has Jesus presented a counterfeit and you just accepted it? Why? Because we're ignorant of truth. We're ignorant of the spirit leading and guiding us and making us who we are in Christ. And we look outwardly to be something in life instead of inward. He already made you something. Listen, your existence, your, your very existence speaks of the ideas that God had in his mind that brought you into this world in the first place. Yeah. He had plans before you even enter your mother's womb. You know, everything that's created has purpose, including you. Amen. Before you decided you wanted to be a preacher, before you decided you want to open up a church, you were something in Christ. Amen. You ain't nothing because you hold a position. I mean, you are something in Christ, but your position don't make you valuable. Amen. It's Jesus. Amen. It's what he done for me on the cross. While I was yet a sinner. Man, I didn't even know how important I was to the kingdom. That's why I was doing stuff beneath my, 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 my purpose. And I see so many believers living beneath their privileges and purpose in life. And they're selling for pennies. And Jesus has placed on you tremendous value. And it's only found in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, untwist me, Lord. Untwist me, Lord. Mm, it's begun. <laughs> Jesus wants to untwist, detangle you. And in doing so, it can be uncomfortable because you can hold two ideas and truths about yourself that didn't originate from God. Mm -hmm. And many times it comes from a position of 
loneliness, rejection, and rejection have a way of uh, making you think that how people treat you is how is your value. Your value isn't how people treat you. And sometimes we can interpret that based off how people treat us. Then the enemy get on our get on our shoulders and start whispering that why they treat me like this? I ain't never did nothing to them. The devil do not, the devil don't care if you've done nothing to them or not. He don't care. He just wants to destroy you. He wants to make you feel like you you the bottom of the earth. You're the bottom of the barrel. That's his objective. Why? Because if you ever believe that, then you'll do things with yourself that God never intended. He wants to pervert you. He wants to take you out of character. And when God, what God had intended for you originally, when he thought about you in his mind before you even entered your mother's womb. His job is to pervert Amen. that twist, turn. Amen? Amen. Lust is a counterfeit. It is a false love. It's an inward craving that you desire something that God don't want for you. Amen. To pervert truth is the perverted form of truth is what? A lie. Mm -hmm. The perverted form of love is lust. The perverted form of of a righteous man is a sinner. Amen? Amen? God never created you to be a sinner. Ain't that wonderful? Yes. Well, you know, this is wonderful. God never created you to be a sinner. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 20. Man, where all that time go, man? You can't be time, <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. I received that from the... That's, that's straight from heaven right there. <laughs> Boy, if I ain't heard a word from the Lord, they tell time. Whew. Yes, God, I'll do it. Woo! All right, Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20. New Living Translation says, What sorrow... Uh, what's all wrong for those who say that evil is good and good is mm -hmm. evil, that dark is light and light is dark, that bitter is sweet and sweet is bitter? We are living in a time where people are, it, it ain't even, they ain't even trying to hide it no more, y'all. Oh. It's, it's out in the open. They don't care about God. They don't care about righteousness. They don't care about holiness and truth. They 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 trying to convince you that everything that this is that's in this book is wrong. And I'm here to tell you and remind you that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And what Jesus said in that book is the truth. And if Jesus says wrong, it's wrong. I don't care who say it is. Your favorite uh, celebrity, your favorite basketball player, football player, if they say something that's against Christ, then they wrong. And if they, anybody believe that, it's wrong. Why? Because it's not me, guys. It's Jesus said he was the way. Yeah. And the truth. And the life. I don't care if it's your favorite preacher. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And we need to be so stubborn in Christ. You need to be so stubborn in Jesus that can't nothing move you. And in these last days, if nothing, if the thing that you believe ain't founded on Christ, it's going to be picked on and moved. And if, the, if your allegiance is to what you believe and it ain't Jesus, that thing going to move you outside the positions of Christ. And the enemy, you'll be vulnerable to his attacks. Amen. Amen. And if Jesus says wrong, it's wrong. I don't care. I don't, I, listen, there's so much that's going on today, guys. We must get. We must be in. We must be so in tune to Christ that we can't think that because the majority believes something. And this is when your faith will be tested. And I, have, I must prepare you. For persecution, not just persecution like somebody gonna kick in your door and some violent. Many of our persecution come from 
um, our dignity being touched. Many of our persecution comes from the embarrassment of looking like you're the only one right or looking like you're the only one wrong and you in this by yourself and the majority attacking you. Many of us suffer persecution from people who don't know Jesus. I can't even put on my Facebook page, I can and I will, who I'm going to vote for without somebody getting on there calling me some kind of out my name. And I must tell you that you got to vote. Amen? You must get out here and vote and vote for the person that Jesus told you to vote for. Yes, Amen? Amen? I must. I do this every election. I say, Jesus, who you want me to vote for? Yes, yes. I know I don't like them and I don't like them. But <laughs> Jesus, I need you. Teach me. Amen. Show me. Lead me. Guide me. I don't want to assume I know God because I remember that last time I assumed I thought I knew something, man. I did, a, you know, I bust my head wide open. I realized how stupid I was, amen. I realized how ignorant I was. So I know to pray that prayer. Amen. And sometimes I'd be like, I'd be like, Lord, it can't be, it can't be. But God knows everything. He's in control. He knows exactly what's going on, amen. Amen. And so we must follow him. And if you're not used to following him, you're not used to making a decision that your mind would disagree with you on. Your mind will disagree with Jesus. Your feelings will disagree with Jesus. Your emotions will disagree with Jesus. And a disciple will still choose Jesus. Amen. Sure will. It don't have to make sense when Jesus done said. Can I say that again? It don't have to make sense when Jesus done said, and it makes sense to come out during the pandemic this morning, but praise God, Jesus got you here, right? Amen. There are some things that Jesus will speak to you that your body will say no, and you will say, I do what Jesus said. Jesus is my Lord, not you. <laughs> Lust, I don't want her. I don't want that. I don't want what she got to offer. I want my wife. Amen. I want you. Amen. I got some testimonies before I get into that. <laughs> we have to be careful not to allow the world to persuade our ideas. This is why Jesus has to disciple your desire. He has to disciple uh, your imagination. He needs to disciple what comes on the screen of your imagination. He needs to disciple, uh, he needs to help you interpret your memories from a godly perspective because your memories will come back to haunt you and it'll have it'll have a movie commercials and everything and convince you of something that has been forgiven or it's cut off those thoughts let me just give you some how to's this is what I do all right so anytime something come on the screen of my imagination and it's not like God I go into rejecting it all right uh, because everything that comes into your mind isn't yours. Because it, can I say that again? Every thought, every image, every idea, every em your emotional self, everything that comes into your mind is it didn't generate from you, right? It can come from the outside in. How I many of y'all minding your own business, minding your own praise the Lord, praise the Lord? All of a sudden, it takes one thought of what somebody said two years ago and got you all in your feelings again. And that is an attack. That is a, that's a strategic attack from the enemy to move, to torture you. It's, I, yeah, thank you, Lord. It's a form of torment. He want to take one incident that happened to you and he want to make money on that thing over and over and over again. He's he not satisfied that you got hurt one time. No, he wants you to hurt 50 more times from that one incident. Say, help me, Lord Jesus. Help me, Lord. Untwist me, Lord. And he wants to, he wants to do this in your life. Why? Because he, won't, he don't care about you. And it might look like it's me. Or it might look like it's your co-worker. It might look like it's your family members. But it is him. I am here to expose his tactics. Amen? Amen. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18. Now let's get into some meat. Oh, here we go, Lord. Teach me. Appreciate you, Ryan. 
pops him in the car. I love this brother, boy. He be giving me just life, you know? I'm out there cutting grass. He be like, what's up, you <laughs> I'm like, man, I ain't no movie star. <laughs> but um, I love that, brother. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18, King James Version says, Flee fornication. For every sin that man sin that man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication uh, sinneth against his own body. All right. Um, it's an interesting word, fornication, here in the Greek. As I was doing my study for this message, uh, the Greek word for fornication is porn nia. P O R N I A. In the Greek, that's what it says. And it's in the Bible 25 times. And in this verse, we see if we break it down, not because fornication to us is just it just mean uh, sex outside of marriage. But Jesus, let's go a little deeper. Porn, uh, pornia meaning is this. In the lexicon Greek, New Testament defines it as every kind of extra marital, unlawful, unnatural sexual intercourse. Let's break it on down even further. Unlawful forms of sex. Say, untwist me, Lord Jesus. Unlawful, an unlawful form of sex. Now, we live in a society that uh, makes, um, actually, it was, it was said that 70% of the internet, 70% of the websites on the internet are pornographic in nature. 70%. Can you believe that? No. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Go do the research. It might be worse now. I ain't no telling. You know, um, but it's something about what God created. Now, I must, I must advocate on God's side that God created sex within the confines of marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And even in then, you can't do anything. You ain't trying to make a porn flick or whatever, what, you know. But God created sex. So there's nothing wrong with sex. It's something wrong with the enemy perverting it and twisting it and turning it into something God never intended. And anything that God created, there, you know, you know um, criminals don't counterfeit $1 bills. Right? Why would you counterfeit a $1 bill, right? Normally, you, they're doing 20s, 50s, and 100s, right? You'll want to counterfeit something that's of value. All right, and the enemy wants us to think about sex all the time. This we need to talk about it in the church, but the kids they need to know about it too when that thing come and try to tempt them. Right. All right, we can't shy away from stuff like this. Why? Because everybody bound, and don't nobody want to talk about it. Why? Because people don't have answers, and I want to. I want to have answers, right? I ask Jesus to teach me how to overcome this thing. It's called lust. And it, and it attacks all of us, right? It's at some point or time or another, we have had our bout with this sex devil. I call it sex devil now. I found out that it was demonic in nature. Say demonic. demonic. And it is a devil yes. that comes, especially men, that comes to, and women, that comes to, got us thinking about sex all the time. Yep. Every time you see a female in tights, sex. Every time you see a male in tight sex, going in the grocery store, sex. I mean, it is ridiculous how the enemy wants to conform our thinking to think about sex all the time. I'm here to bust the bubble. God don't want you thinking about sex all the time. He, and this is, what, this is a perversion with it in it. This is a perversion. Why? Because you need to be thinking about it within the confines of marriage, behind the room, in privacy. And the enemy want to take something that was intended for privacy and make it public. He want to take something that was sacred and put it out in the open like it ain't nothing. And he wants you to treat yourself as if this just a consensual act and this ain't nothing. No, it's a spiritual act. 
Is sex is more spiritual than you think? He wants you to act as if this is not important. And he got it. It's so wicked. You know, when um, when they were talking about gay rights, you know, I think it was back in 2008. You know, we want to be married and, you know, they want their rights. And I love homosexuals. I love y'all. God bless you. But back then, I said, listen, man, it's it's gonna open up. It's gonna open up a can that we ain't gonna be able to close. They passing laws now for pedophiles in California, and we need to be aware of this. Why? Because they they just it's a movie that, uh, documentary that came on Netflix called Cuties. Eight year old, seven year old, ten year old girls doing stuff like this, and guys doing stuff that's my wife don't even do. I mean, it's not, it's like they're creating content for the pedophiles. I love pedophiles. God bless y'all. You just need to be free. I love homosexuals. But I got to tell God's people the truth. You can't call good evil and evil good. And this is what they're going to do in these last days. It'll never be right. For a grown man to sleep with a child. That's right, that's right. Talking about his personality is 12 on the inside. You got psychologists. You got psychologists just that sign co-signing for this. You got people who study human behavior co-signing this stuff. What like what what do you think slavery came from? To, so that people can and it can be law. Some psychologists were saying this stuff. They gave the, 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 they gave the law concerning human behavior. That's why we got to stick to truth. Amen. And the pedophiles can't come in here but get free. They ain't coming in here after our kids. Amen. They're getting free though. And we got to be able to love them. Amen. But this power that hit that door, the devil's got to go in Jesus' name. You can't come in here in the name of Jesus. Touching our kids. That stuff got you thinking about sex too early. It'll, it'll ruin a child. It twists them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And many of us know and been touched at an early age. Know that these things bring trauma to the soul. And this is why we got to serve Jesus so much. Why I submit to him to bring healing to these areas so we can move forward in life. Amen. And there is healing available even for those who've been molested. And there's no shame in that, right? We can't act like this stuff don't happen and 80% of us been touched when we was young. And don't nobody ever talk about it. Because, you know, you know, we just, we don't want to, yeah, you got devils, that's why. That you don't want to is a devil. Because you ain't fighting for these babies. You have been defending these devils. I don't care who he is. He got a devil. I don't care if he's a pastor. He got a devil. You can't defend them devils. And when you're defending them, you're a devil. Yeah. Ah, praise God. Them devils, can, them devils are not entering in, but they can get free. The light of Jesus can come and shine, and that darkness got that go. <laughs> amen? Can I get amen and king? Amen. Amen and king. All right. Uh, so let's see here. Um, I got this out for a reason. <laughs> All right. We uh, grow up in life, and this is a rope here that I had my little girl uh, braid for me before I came up. And we are twisted. All right. Uh, saved and twisted, preaching and twisted, you know, going to work and twisted. Many of us. And until Jesus untwists us, we're going to be twisted. Amen. Amen. And you might go to heaven still twisted, amen? I'm not, I'm not knocking you that you ain't saved, but you might need, I know you need deliverance, right? Ain't no might in that. So, we, in, in untwisting, there has to be a allowing the Lord Jesus to come in our thinking, come in our emotions, and to uh, detangle us because it looks like it's just one rope. But we, this one rope is made of three strands. We know the Bible says a three-four code is not easily broken. And that is true. This is why the enemy tie you up so early. 
Because when you become an adult, it'll be more difficult for you to get free. Amen? And so the Lord wants to detangle us, and he wants to free us, and rebraid us with who he is. So that you'll be solid. You'll be unmovable. All right? And this rope now become a relationship between you, Jesus, the Spirit, and His Word. Amen? Amen? And so Jesus wants to untwist us. Amen. Oh, Jesus. The effects of love is contentment, faithfulness, and trust. This is why it's very important that you get healed of rejection and you start tackling, attack, tackling this area of rejection in your life of discontentment and a feeling of like nobody loves you, no, nobody cares, especially in the time of the pandemic. Everyone is home, everyone isolated. It's easy to interpret that don't that that you are not loved. Amen. And the effects of love is contentment. The effects of love is faithfulness and trust. Amen. The effects of lust is pleasure, greed. And discontentment. The effect of lust is pleasure, greed, and discontentment. Here's the lies that lust tells us. I'm not hurting anyone. I'm not hurting. I'm not hurting anyone. Second lie. Don't, don't nobody know. Well, that's another lie. The first person you're hurting is yourself. Amen. And the reason we need lust is because we lack love. And the reason we fight for lust, because lust convinces us that it's the only one that truly cares and loves you. The most deceptive thing about lust is what I find out. The most deceptive thing about lust is lust don't say no. It's always there. Every time you run to it, it's always there. It mimics faithfulness. That's so good. That's so good. My struggle with lust, what happened when my wife told me no in the bedroom? And the enemy say, he have these other options out here. This ready for you, this ready for you, this ready for you. Now, if women y'all don't know, know that, that's what happens. That what happened to me, right? But instead of, and this is what Jesus, I had a choice. I had, I had a choice to make. Either I run to Jesus, run to his word, run to the spirit. When those other options were speaking loud and clear, you know, the enemy don't, he just don't. I'm here. I'm waiting on you. She ain't there. And then me and we must grow up in the knowledge of knowing our wives, right? The Bible says that we must deal with them according to knowledge. And there are times where, you know, Jesus, man, I'm telling you, you know, my wife need a break. I know, I know, I just busted a lot of bubbles, right? Mm -hmm. And our bodies, we as men, there's abilities and there's self-control that you can tap into where your body don't get to rule you. Jesus, man. That's good. I don't care how much you throb and you tell me you want. I don't care. That's good. Make it plain? Make it plain. I don't care what jump in your body. See, we got to talk about stuff that you ain't told nobody and you know this stuff happened and we need to talk about this. Why? Because everybody's being attacked, not just men, but the Bible says that these things hide in our members. Yes, yes. And we need to deal with it. Amen. Okay, what you tell me, flesh? Amen. Jesus is my Lord. Amen. And your wife is hurting or, you know, you can't do nothing that singles, Right? So you better, we got to tell this thing. We got to come in. We got to come under submission to Lord Jesus Christ and tell our body, no, you ain't getting nothing but Jesus. <laughs> Say amen if you can. <laughs> <laughs> we just like, we just can't talk about this at a singles conference and a, and a, we, how, we, how many times they had him? Oh, help me, Jesus. And we must. 
start growing in our faith to the point where the enemy no longer get to rule us. Now, this is why I find a lot of men get, get you know, you hear them. They favor. They favor this. I just, I got to have this. I got to have that. I got to have this. I got to have, you, you got to have Jesus. All right? And I know what your body is telling you. And I know what it's trying to tempt you to do. But we must begin to believe in Jesus during those times. Because at your most vulnerable state, all right, this is when the enemy comes in and brings counterfeits. And now we begin to make choices in our careers based off uh, our vulnerabilities. We'll make choices in marriage. We'll make choices with friends. We'll make choices. And it's stimulated out of the lack of love and the lack of knowing who we are in Christ. All right? So I must petition you to continue to believe, to continue to believe in the times of temptation. Amen? So this is what I pray in those times. I say, Lord, get this evil out of me. I don't want to sin against you, God. Teach me, because if you don't teach me, God, I'm going into sin. You need Jesus to teach you. Say, teach me, Lord Jesus. Teach me. I said, Lord, I need you to teach me, or I am going to teach my children wrong. I am going to teach the people wrong. I am going to teach people uh, things that I don't want to teach them, Lord. Why? Because we don't, we not, I don't only teach when I'm here preaching. I teach when I do something. Amen. That's good. Your actions teach is teaching something Amen. and preaching something. So when I commit a sin, I am teaching, even though it's in private. There is no such thing as a private act. Why? Because the Bible says in Hebrews that we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. That we are, you got the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. This physical realm is not the only thing that is. Right? You have a, you have a spirit realm. Right? So it's not just a private act. All of heaven is watching at your episode of your TV show. The eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. He's watching. He's, he's watching. He's watching. He's watching. And as we get renewed and untangled and untwisted to this revelation that God is here with me. He'll never leave me even though I'm, do, I'm, I'm being tempted to do this. He's still there. Amen? Amen. Lust will tell you that more is better. Lust and greed go hand to hand because lust is never satisfied just as greed is never satisfied. Mm -hmm. And greed have a way of convincing you you need more. We just, we're just not talking about more sex. We're talking about more money. You need another career. You need this. God wants you to understand and overcome the spirit of lust and it has to in combination with overcome greed. God bless y'all. My God. Lust will convince you that more is better. One of the most damaging aspects of lust and perversion this is the most damaging that I've witnessed. It had me looking at people wrong, mm -hmm. especially women. Mm -hmm. The reason it's called perversion is because you're looking at somebody that's your sister yeah. right. or your mother. I got my wife right there. Why would I want to be with my sister? That's why it's called perversion. It's twisted. Yeah. Why would I want to be with my mother? Make me want to throw ah. I don't want, and that's why I say I don't want you. Even when women have presented themselves to me as a pastor, come on, pastor, I just need to talk to you, just one on one. <laughs> and if I wasn't free, on, they done did other pastors like that. I can tell. They done did other pastors like that. And if I wasn't free and presented, see, I see you, you my sister. Wow, I got to protect you. Why would I want to be with you? 
Insane! This is one of the most damaging things that lust do. Especially to men and women. Because we both wish we struggle. In the, and lust comes to everyone, right? Perversion comes to everyone. Why would I want to be with my sister? That's insane to me. I got my wife over there. All I want is my wife. I remember those times. And, you know, it's just one of those things. I remember when I first got saved, this is one of the things Jesus started teaching me about. And I used to work at Ruby Tuesdays at the mall on Madison Square before uh, David Buster's and all that stuff was out there. And I was coming in to work one time. I probably saved two weeks. Just got filled with the Holy Ghost, excited about Jesus, coming into the mall, right? The main entrance. You know, in the middle of summertime, man, the women be dressing. And, and so I'm coming out, right? I'm coming out of my car, going into the mall. Here go the entrance. Three of them coming out, right? And they all, thighs all showing, jiggling and stuff. And I said, I said, Lord Jesus. I, you know, the Bible says don't look to the left or to the right, you know? But they right here, Lord, you know? And I'm trying to mind my own business. I'm trying, I'm trying to stay saved. I'm trying to stay saved, man. And I'm walking around, trying to walk around, you know, trying to, I, I didn't care. I was being a dork, right? <laughs> I said, man, let me stay away, Lord. You got to help me. So as I was walking, the three of them was walking. One of them looked over at me, and she said, you want to wrestle? And I said, Lord, oh, Jesus, help me. I walked. And so this is when Jesus started teaching me about lust. And then when I walked past them, I looked back like that. Because you know we always look back in the world. That's how we just trained to look back, right? I looked back. And Jesus said, that's what's going to get you in trouble. That's when he spoke up in my heart. You can't control what comes in your eye, but you can control what you gaze at. And what you gaze at will be your point of attention. And then the screen of your imagination, them scenes, them videos, they start with a picture. Then they turn into a video. And you have to stop the momentum of that. Good. Jesus got to teach you. This is called untwisting because before, woo! Before, we gaze. Before, we ran to. And this is when Jesus started teaching me how the power of sex and the power of sexual immorality is witchcraft. Why? Because it controls you. That's and women use their body, men do too, as a point of control. That's why you, in dealing with lust and perversion, you got to deal with Jezebel. You got to. The Bible says in Revelations. The Bible says in Revelations. He said, "He said, oh, I got one thing against you. You tolerate. Mm -hmm. You tolerated that." Prophet, that one who called herself a prophet, she called herself a prophetess. And then, she, and then the Bible says that she has, you have submitted yourself to her sexual immorality. And if we ain't dealing and preaching against sexual immorality and dealing with it on a real level, how free are we getting, getting if Jezebel got us ripped up? We always thinking about sex. Every time we see a woman, we're thinking about sex. Every time you see this, you think about sex. Sex, 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 sex. And Jesus want to rule your mind like that. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Jesus want to set you free from that. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Another testimony. That's when Jesus started teaching me. And I remember <laughs> my homie Ben. Uh, he said uh, he was he we were about to get. Was, he was my best man, and he knew I was getting married. And he said, Jasper, I got two up in the room waiting on you. He said, I got one. I need you to occupy the other one. I said, man, did I tell you I was getting married? This is my best man. I remember when I first started lawn care service, I was handing out flies, right? I ain't have no marketing team, no nothing, right? We just handing out. I'm stomping the pavement, handing out flies. 
I remember there were times where one time I was in my neighborhood minding my own business, just trying to do right. Stand on the Lord. And the enemy don't care. He'll ambush you. You have to be ready. He don't care, right? You need community. You need to be ready for these things. Did Jesus start teaching me? Oh, thank you, Lord. Jesus start teaching me in my mind. What? Because we all got these what else that come in our mind. And if we, the Bible says, if a man think of in his heart, so is he. You need to see yourself overcoming on the screen of your imagination. Don't walk in defeat in your mind. Don't see yourself being with her in your mind. You already, it's over. It's done. Jesus already see that as adultery. You need to overcome on the screen of your imagination. Give yourself a pop quiz and see yourself overcoming that thing. So when real life happened, you already done took those things. Hallelujah, ones. Jesus. Why wait for the test to come before you practice for it? That's good. Let the word produce healthy thoughts. See yourself overcoming. So when she came to the door just in her panties and a halter, I said, I'm just, I'm trying to, I'm cutting grass. <laughs> I'm cutting grass. She came to know this is what she said. How can I help you? And I'm like, I just want grass to cut. Right? The Bible, I just want grass to cut. I just want to. I remember one time somebody called me, she said, I need you to come over and give me an estimate, right? And then I said, you know, it'll be $35. She said, I don't pay to get my grass cut. Oh Lord. I said, huh? Lord Jesus, help me. What you mean you don't pay to get your grass cut? Why am I here? Yeah. Run. Run. <laughs> you know I had to be like Jacob, you know, or Joseph, and ran for my life. But I, and I'm not telling you this to say, I'm letting you know that pastors, the devil don't, don't care, right? And you have to overcome. He's vicious. You have to overcome. You have to allow Jesus to teach you in your private times. Right? You have to make a decision what you're going to do it behind closed doors, on your knees. All right? I remember when I told them all I got saved on my job, right? I'm saved. They knew how it was before. And it's funny how people don't believe you, man. When you when they see you, they see you just smoke and party the night before, right? Or two weeks ago. What you were just, you was just. I know, I know, I'm saved. And those women didn't believe me. You know, and so we have to. Um, and women I tried to holler all of a sudden appearing and just, you know, wanting to, hey, how you doing? And it's just. Vicious how the enemy. She said, take your time. I believed her. All right. Um, all right, everyone standing. Hallelujah. There you go, Mario. Hallelujah, Jesus, 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 Jesus. The Lord Jesus says, if you repent, turn from your wicked ways. He's faithful. He's there. He will help you come out of this. And I, as a pastor, as a representative of heaven, as, as an ambassador of the Lord of the kingdom of God, I must assist you in your walk with the Lord. Therefore, these times of altar call, there are the times that I enjoy because now I get to tell what, whatever is bothering you to go in Jesus' name. I love that word, go, because them devils got to do what I say. Amen. And I saw for some reason I'm dealing with, I'm going to deal with lust, I'm going to deal with perversion. But I want to deal with mental imbalances. Yes. Some type of mental illness. Being forgetful, uh, not remembering, uh, talking about stuff that's not right or that don't make sense at times. Voices, yes God. Other voices that's not of God harassing you about things that's not going to happen but taunting you and tempting you. I want to pray over you. Uh, 
a sober mind, a mind that thinks clearly. I want to come against the spirit of double-mindedness, thinking two ways, two personalities. One day believing, the next day doubt. Yes, God. Y'all repeat after me, Father God, Father God I, yield I yield to you as my master and Lord. I yield my mind. I yield my will. And I yield my emotions. Lord, forgive me for allowing my thoughts, my imagination to run wild. Forgive me for thinking on negativity, doubt, unbelief. Forgive me, God, in Jesus' name. Satan, I renounce you all the works of darkness. All the works of darkness. Every image, every memory, every image, every memory that's not like God, I renounce it. I reject you in Jesus' name. Satan, I command you to go now in Jesus' name. Depression, go. Anxiety, go. Fear, go. Sexual immorality, go in the name of Jesus.